On Larry King Now, his hip-hop album has been called the best of the year. It's Pusha T. Were you surprised at that? Not at all. I was calling it the best hip-hop album before, before they all did. Where's hip-hop going? To the moon, baby. Look at corporate America. The corporations and the, and the people who are successful are the ones who have hired that guy to put their finger on the pulse of urban culture. Pharrell is um, actually one of my best friends. He's definitely one of the trendsetters, innovators, I think uh, the best producer in music. Is he tough on you? Very much so. He always wants you to try new things. And, you know, I'm, I'm not always open to that. Plus, most embarrassing moment professionally. Forgetting my lyrics on Good Morning America. What, how did you handle it then? I, I hummed it. You hummed it? <laughs> yeah, I hummed the melody. All next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. Our special guest is Pusha T, the Grammy-nominated multi-platinum rapper. His debut solo album, My Name Is My Name, has been hailed as one of the best of 2013. His sophomore effort, King Push, is due later this year. Prior to going it alone, Push has spent years as one of half, one half rather, of the critically acclaimed duo, The Clips, with his brother, No Malice. Thanks for coming, Push. Uh, thanks for having me. Rolling Stone, Complex, and Pitchfork all called My Name Is My Name one of the best albums of the year. Were you surprised at that? Not at all. Um, you know, I, I pride myself on um, making uh, street hip-hop albums, and I feel like that's my lane, and I've been doing it consistently for a very long time. So, um, you know, I was calling it the best hip-hop album before, before they all did. But did fame come late to you? Fame came very late. Um, you know, I started this in 2002 with the clips. Um, that album, it was a platinum album. After that, I went through like label turmoil. I went through um, plenty ups and downs in the business. And so this new My Name Is My Name album is like a, a, a new start. You know, it's my first solo album. Um, like I said, I, that was my first album actually in the group was 12, 13 years ago. You said that this is the most uncompromised hip-hop album that people have heard in ages. What do you mean? Um, uncompromised in the sense of it totally goes against the grain of everything that's going on in music right now. How so? Um, you know, music and rap music right now is like totally against lyrics. It's not about lyrics. It's, it's more so about melodies and it's more so about the dance and the party. This is about the fundamentals of hip-hop lyric-driven hip-hop, um, boom bap, uh, you know, heavy drums, not, not so much about melodies and so on and so forth. You're verse-driven then, you, know, yes. they, you, you like the lyric. Right, it's, about, it's for the listener. Is it true you weren't allowed to talk about radio play when you and Kanye were making this album? Totally. How um, do you know him? Oh man, I, I met Kanye years ago. He was, uh, he's always been a fan of the clips. And um, around 2006, I ended up um, being a surprise guest. Me and my brother were the surprise guests at his birthday party, and we performed my whole album at the time, which was called Hell Hath No Fury. Um, at that the, was the clips, right? Yeah, as the clips, um, at the Louis Vuitton flagship store. And, um, you know, he just sat there and sang with us word for word, the whole album. And um, from there, the relationship grew. We did, we did records together, and, um, you know, in 2009, I think it was like 2009, he was working on his album called uh, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. And I flew to Hawaii to work with him. And from there, man, I, I came back home from Hawaii, signed to good music. The Clips was a two-man group? Yes, my you, brother. You and your brother. Yeah. Not the Eclipse, the Clips, right? Yeah, just the Clips. Is Kanye a friend of yours now or just a co-worker? No, he's definitely a friend of mine. How's he dealt with the price of fame, Kanye? I, I met Kanye once, <clears> twice. <throat> I interviewed him once. I found him. Great guy. Yeah, definitely a great guy. Um, you know, I, I feel like um, I feel like Kanye is just very outspoken. He's uh, very passionate, and sometimes people may mistake that passion for arrogance or being a bit brash. But I mean, I think he deals with it deals with it very well. Do you enjoy being an innovator? Do you like going against the grain? Is there a rebel in you? It's definitely a rebel in me. Um, you know, this is the way I learned. 
like I, like my my first my first album um you know it came out at a time when like music was you know I was working with the Neptunes they're like the they were the biggest producers at the time Pharrell Williams he was singing on every every hook 49% of the music that was on radio at the time and huh. our first record our first record um he wasn't even on the hook and it became a classic so that sort of set me up for having to you know always go against the grain and always being different than from what everybody else was doing you're known as one of the best lyricists in the business what makes what's the ingredients of a good lyric i know from my fan of pop era my sinatra and my oh really sammy davis and <laughs> Vic Damone and tony bennett they were lyrics right. i understood them you know right um, What's the secret of a hip hop lyric? A hip hop lyric is 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 a lyric that people that the people your core audience can feel. Um, it also infuses uh, metaphors, similes, drawing parallels. Um, you know, w within those things that that shows the creativity. That shows the creativity of, of of the actual rap game. But can you hum it? No. <laughs> I mean, you know. Now, to me, it's music if you can hum it. You yeah. can't hum it. I mean, you know, nah, it's not, it's not really, you know, you're not getting anything out of it by humming it because it's, 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 it's words to digest. What indicates success of an album? Record sales, radio play, reviews? What do you view as an album's success? Man, um, I, I view an album success. I can tell an album success by my touring. And that's how I look at it. By touring. Yeah. I used to, um, you know, the game has changed so much because of, I would say, because of social media. And, you know, so everything that sells the most isn't always critically acclaimed or hailed. And, you know, you have, you have guys that don't sell as much, but everybody, all the tastemakers and hipsters think that they have the best album. And you can see that when you're performing at every festival in the U.S. and overseas. Wow, so you're picking up, you see that the crowd tells you. Oh, for sure. Tell me about this sophomore album you're releasing, King Push. That's going to uh, come out later this year? Yeah, King Push is coming out later this year. And it's... Um, what is that? It's is that your other name? Yeah, and, it, and it's basically um, how I feel, how I feel about where I am in the rap game. I, I feel like it's a, it's a time to crown me. I feel like, you know... Crown I'm Crown you king of the yes, rap? for sure. Well, you deserve it if you. I think so. Have there been pre? Have people listened to this album? Have you gotten word from people yet about King Push? Yeah. No, it's it's not finished yet. It's not finished yet. I'm taking my time with it. Coming up, will the Clips make another album? We'll talk about Push's former family duo after the break. We're back with Pusha T. He has really made it big in the hip hop world, and he's about to become the king. Right. By the end of this year. Uh, now, prior to going solo, you were half of the Clips with your brother for years. How did you name that, you and your brother? Why did you call it the Clips? Um, actually, it was a uh, full eclipse, and uh, you know, as in blocking out, blocking yeah. out the sun like and blocking out the comp yeah, blocking out the competition. But uh, there was already a crew at that time, so we just shortened it to Clips. That was described as crack rap. What does that mean? Man. Um, yeah, this, you know, crack rap, coke rap, it's, it's a term that pretty much annoys me. Because well, it implies that you were dealing drugs or, or, or right. taking drugs. Right, but, it, you know, it, it annoys me simply because, um, you know, I know where it was coined. This is like, this is a person, a uh, Caucasian male, uh, who is like a big fan of the clips, loves the similes, loves the metaphors, well-educated, well-written man. And... Um, you know, to, to make his, his journalism, you know, uh, I guess stronger, he, he labels it that way. So you've never had a drug problem? No, I've never had a drug problem. And the music is, the mu music uh, does reference cocaine and it does reference, you know, street life and drugs, but that's like the seamless metaphor throughout the whole thing. Why did it break up? Clips. Yeah. Well, Clips never breaks up, because we're brothers, ever. Why is the act not performing together? Exactly. Um, you know, my brother um, is, is, took a turn in his spirituality. and um, Found religion? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't like to say he's found religion because he's always been religious. But um, he's just very convicted, very dedicated. And, um, you know. You so know, he's just, now a Christian gospel artist? Yes, that? totally. 
doing very well. How did you feel about that? Oh, man, at the time, you know, you have to remember, that's my older brother. So um, at the time, he's five years older than me. He basically taught me how to rap. Um, so I wasn't happy at first. Um, but, it, you know, it's a, it's a respect thing. And any time that I see my brother passionate about anything, um, I, I basically have to ride with it. How would your parents deal with it? Um, you know, I think my parents were pretty much, you know, all for it. Anytime, anything in, involving spirituality and, and God and religion and, and, and watching him be so, you know, dedicated, it, it's a good thing. You're very close with your brother. Very. Will you two make music again together? I would hope so. Is it true I'm told that you don't want your mom to listen to your work? Never. Why? I, I mean, you know, when I was coming up, this was the same music that I had to turn off. You know what I'm saying? It was, <laughs> Stop that yeah. in there. I had to turn it off. I had to turn it down. She didn't want to hear it. So now it's like, um, you know, her telling me and reciting lyrics back to me and questioning me about my lyrics and so on and so forth, it's a bit much. It makes my skin crawl. And your brother's not doing lyrics like that if he's doing Christian gospel, he's, he's right? definitely not. She can talk to him all day about it, and it's, it's you know, it's a great conversation. Tell me about working with Pharrell. <laughs> um, Pharrell, Pharrell is... Um, actually one of my best friends. Um, you know, we were friends. I How was big is he? As far as what? Music. The culture? Yeah. Um, he's definitely one of the trendsetters, innovators, I think uh, the best producer in music. He produced my first two albums and the majority of my third album as, for the clips, and he produced one record on My Name Is My Name. Do you like being a solo act now when you're so close to your brother and that ended? Um, yes, I do like being a solo act simply because, you know, uh, everything sort of falls on me now. Everything falls on me. I used to lean on my brother a lot. And, um, the older brother. Yeah. Of course. I could, man, listen, some days I, I, I might not have came to Larry King and he would have came and, you know, that's, but that's what he'll do. What makes Pharrell a great producer? What makes a great producer? Um, I think he's just well versed in all facets of music, uh, musicality, instrumentation, um, actually a great writer, um, uh, knows melody really well. He puts it all together. He puts it all together for you and all I have to do is just insert the verse so it makes it easier for me. Is he tough on you? Very much so. Um, Pharrell is very tough in the sense of he, he always wants you to try new things and you know, I'm, I'm not always open to that, but I mean, you know, I have to give him that respect, usually. Did your Clips fans follow you as a solo? I would think so. I think my Clips fans have followed me. They've grown with me, and they, um, they're, they're, they're loving the transition. When you do concerts, what kind of venues do you work? Um, I would say they're, they're uh, I just got off a tour, 35 city tour, uh, 2,500 to 4,000 seaters. Um, man, uh, all different cultures, all different cultures, all different uh, races, all different people from everywhere. Ages too? For sure, ages. Up next, King Push on the state of hip hop today and why we don't see more gay rappers. Stay with us. We're back with Pusha T, he's on a roll. My name is my name and the new one coming out this year will be King Push and we're gonna ask him now about hip hop culture. Has, how would you describe it today? I think hip hop is a growing, a growing genre, growing culture. Um, I feel like it's being embraced by every genre, every every culture of people. Who founded it? Was there an originator? Um, <clears throat> yeah, and it's 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 split between a, a few different people, I believe. But I, from what I understand, hip hop was uh, it started in the Bronx, New York. Um, there, there's Grandmaster Kaz, there's Melly Mel. There are a few different people who have allegedly been the originators, but as far as the area, I would say the Bronx, New York is where it started. Do they have very long careers? Um, I think we're seeing the, the lifespan of hip hop grow. As me as an artist, my, um, my goal and, and what I wanna see is who, which hip hop artist is gonna tour like the Rolling Stones. In big arenas. Yeah, well, big arenas and that type of longevity. Why have we not seen a gay rapper? Um, I what do don't you know. think? Um, I mean, it's ten percent of the population, maybe. Right. 
Which but, certainly one would come along would have a following. I, I believe that, but I mean, you know, at this time, I, I just sort of feel like, I feel like the 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 the, the gay and homosexual uh, culture is just not the, the coming out party is just not that important anymore. Like I don't think we we care. Even even if there was a gay rapper, I don't know if if we'd really wouldn't bother anybody. You if, think? If, they, if the music was good. You know what I'm saying? So we, it comes down to the music. Uh, definitely. Uh, the N-word, do you use it in your lyrics? Yes, I do. What do you think of the NFL's proposal to ban it? I think it definitely should be banned. So explain the dichotomy. You use it, but you For don't sure. want them to use it on the football field. For sure. Because I feel like, um, I, feel like I, I use it, and anyone who, who gets my music, you know, you, it's a conscious decision to pick up my music, buy it, so on and so forth. I feel like, you know, uh, the N-word, I, I don't necessarily want to hear the N-word um, on, on the uh, instant replay cam, you know, as, I, as I'm watching the game and, and everybody else is watching it as well. It's offensive in that regard, sure. right? For sure it is. But when you use it, it's not. No, it's definitely, it's, it's, it's offensive to some, but I would say that I'm, I'm using it amongst my peers and, and, and amongst people that I'm speaking with. So you're not offending anyone when you use it, you think? I'm not offending anyone when I use it amongst people that I'm using it with, no. Where's hip-hop going? Oh, man. To what do you moon, think? To the moon, baby. I mean, the future is unlimited? <laughs> of course, it's, it's unlimited. I mean, look at, look at corporate America. Um, everybody's infusing hip-hop in all of them. Um, in everything that they're doing. I'm talking about sponsorships, endorsements, so on and so forth. Uh, you know, the, the, the corporations and the, and the people who are successful are the ones who have, you know, hired that guy to put their finger on the pulse of urban culture and music and fashion and the whole hip hop culture. And the one who can translate it back to the big wigs, big wigs and corporations, those are the ones who are being successful. What's life like? Are you married? No. Always been single? Um, always been single. Yeah, have you been single all your life? Was <laughs> that a tough question? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not married, but I have a girlfriend. Want to get married? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. How old are you? 36. Where do you see yourself age 46? Oh, man. Age 46, um, I see myself, as far as music goes, um, building my own, my own acts and um, being the head of a, a record label. Oh. For sure. Um, as of right now, I mean, you know, that, that's for music. I mean, right now I own two retail stores. Um, Doing I have a, what? Uh, selling clothes. You I have, design clothes? No, no, no. I don't design clothes, but um, I sell clothes. I sell high-end clothes um, and streetwear. Um, also, I have a clothing line uh, for the past five years. It's called Play Clothes. Our anniversary was uh, last December. Where are they sold? Uh, in boutiques all over the country, at least three or four hundred boutiques. And what are your own stores called? A cream. Cream, and where are they? They're in Norfolk, Virginia. That's that's your home base, yeah, right? Yeah, one in the mall and one in the destination. What store. led you into the clothing business? I, I realized at a time in music when when music wasn't going so well for me that uh, that I had influence and uh, influence the, the 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 youth in regards to fashion. They, I would do these shows after, after putting out these free mixtapes, and it'd be a thousand kids coming to the show, and not only would they be singing the words to the, to the records, they would be sitting there pointing out what I had on, like, oh man, that's the, uh, you know, general jacket from a particular line I was, I was wearing. That's a one of one piece. And I noticed the kids were dressing like me and, and wearing the same clothes I was wearing. I like what you're wearing now. What does no fish mean? I have absolutely no idea. This isn't my line. This is Kenzo. I just like the way it looked. I like the way it looks, too. I like the colors. Yeah. I did it for you. <laughs> well, I'm honored. You're into a lot of things. <laughs> well, we've just talked about Pusha's foray into fashion. In our final segment, we'll have him answer some of your questions. Don't go away. The King Push album will be released later this year. My Name Is My Name has already made him a major name in the world of hip-hop music. We have some social media. By the way, do you want to become like Jay-Z or? Uh, they, wanna... Those guys are definitely, um, definitely inspire me. The Jay-Zs, the Sean Combs, the Kanye West, the Pharrell Williams, definitely. All yeah. those guys. They've made a mark. For sure. 
Some social media questions at one three TX tweets. What's the one thing that brings out the most creativity in you during the album creation process? Um, man, I would I would have to say um, amazing beats. Like I, I write to amazing beats. Is it in your head? Uh, no. Where does it come from? It, 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 it's it's the lyrics are spawned by the beats. So if the beats are good and if I'm really touched by those, then that's where the lyrics come from. The beat first. Yes, for sure. A Jeff Hailstone on Twitter. Who else would you like to collaborate with? Oh, man. Um, you know, I would say Nas. I would say Nas and Jay-Z are my final collaborations that I would want to do. Are there, is there a great female hip-hop artist? Plenty. Yeah? Plenty. Uh, I would say... Um, of yesteryear, someone I admire is Queen Latifah, Missy Elliott, um, of right now, Nicki Minaj. Queen's a great, she's terrific. Awesome. Dave Dowling on Facebook. What are your political leanings? Are you very political? Um, I would, I would like to say I'm a Democrat. And, and yeah, I mean, I vote for sure. You voted for Obama, I guess. For sure I did. Dare Bear tweets. How many beats do the Neptunes have on the new album? Um, I haven't I haven't finalized that yet, but um, the Neptones are Pharrell and Chad Hugo, right? For sure. Okay. Um, but I will say that I was in the studio for a month with them, so they're, they're definitely going to have a good amount. At Spank and Franklin via Twitter, despite your ex manager's arrest and your brother's no malice's departure, why is it that you have not shied away from rap? Um, rap is my passion. Rap is my passion, and... What happened to your manager? Uh, my manager went to jail, um, incarcerated for 30 years due to drug arrest. Did he steal from you? No, never. So he had a drug problem, but it didn't... No, 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 no. Not a drug problem, a drug selling problem. Oh, a drug selling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you've never steered away from it. Yeah, n never, man. Okay, we're going to finish this show with a game called If You Only Knew. I just throw out some questions. Okay. Remember the first person you kissed? I don't know. You don't remember that little girl somewhere? I definitely don't remember her. What keeps you up at night? Um, thinking about the next day keeps me up at night. Most embarrassing moment professionally? Um, I would have to say forgetting my lyrics on Good Morning America. <laughs> really? For sure. What? How did you handle it there? I, I hummed it. You hummed it? <laughs> yeah, I hummed the melody. They never knew, right? Never, never got it. <laughs> I like that. Who's your best friend? Best friend, I would have to say, is Doug Dozier, my partner in Play Clothes. And uh, he's not in the music business, right? No, fashion. What's your guilty pleasure? Um, my guilty pleasure is southern food. Ah. Uh. Chicken. Yeah. No, green beans. All no. of those. Okra. Not that. Not that. <laughs> Not that. Musician fans would be surprised to know you listen to? Um, huge Nirvana fan. Ah. Yeah. Do you have a mantra? Not really. Best piece of advice you ever got? Just stay consistent. Tell me something no one knows about you. Something that no one knows about me. I talk to myself often. Oh, you do? Yeah, a lot. In words or you? you no, in words. Like you go around. In words. <laughs> like you're in a car and you might I'm be. I'm in conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy for your success, man. Keep Thank it up. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks to my guest, Pusha T. My Name Is My Name is available in all stores and on iTunes. And look out for his sophomore album, King Push, later this year. And remember, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>